Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 176 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara. Do I sound like Elvis? Probably not, but... A little lower. A little lower. (laughs) <laughs> What's happening, Barb? How are you today? I took the damn day off, Elvis. I got up this morning and said, you know what? I'm going to take the day off. So I went back to bed, woke up at 1130, which is super unlike me. Just went for a six mile run and 95 degree heat. And now we're doing our podcast. And then I'm going to watch the Olympics because I love the Olympics. Love, love, love them. So you basically just pissed off all of our listeners because that's like an ideal day right there. I know, and I never do it. And we're actually a little bit slow right now. And like the last two years, I've realized, you know what? I am going to get some balance. And when I see an opportunity, I take it now. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to have a great day. Thank you. Even when days I'm not working, I still can't sleep until 1130. That's insane. I know. I never <laughs> do that. And I just was just like, I'm done. I kept checking my phone, getting up, checking my phone. Doctors are texting me, put it back, go back to sleep. You know, it wasn't yeah. like I was completely sleeping, but hey, sure. I'll take it. Heck yeah. I could go for three days of that in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, awesome. So coming up in about three weeks, LMT is back. <laughs> I know. The last big meeting we had before this whole uh, bleep show was LMT Lab Day Chicago. So LMT Lab Day West is happening at the end of the month. I've never been. Have you ever been to Lab Day West? No, but I would love to, but I think you're going to go, right? Yeah, I get to go with my team from Preet, and I am super excited to check out this more relaxed summertime version of Lab Day. I've always heard about the West show. You know, while it's smaller, I hear it's more laid back and just a ton of fun. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm happy for you because tell you what, maybe we can go next year and do the podcast there and you can work and we can share podcasts and hang for out. Sure, yeah. I absolutely love California, right? Yeah. Even though the country's opening it up because of the stupid uptick in more COVID cases, mm-hmm. we just found out that the hotel that the Lab Day West is at is requiring everybody to wear a mask the whole time. Well, it is California, so it's not I get surprising. It. I get it. And you know what? I don't really feel bad for myself. I worked in the lab with a mask on for months. Yep. But can you imagine being on stage? Oh, no. Having to really? talk with a mask on? Oh, No, I can't, actually. That's ridiculous. I can't imagine that they get exempt from the rule just because you're on stage, but I feel for everybody having to do that, so. (laughs) (laughs) Like you mentioned, you're not going. Podcast is not going. So no great recording from this year's Lab Day West. But please, stop by and see me at the Preet booth and say hello. I'm not ashamed to admit that I've been spending way too much time on Instagram lately. Come on. The wonderful (laughs) side effect of that is we've had some amazing guests on the podcast because we found them on Instagram. And this week is no different. We talked to a lot of labs about advertising and how they can get clients. But there is a guy from a lab that has almost 60 thousand followers on instagram gil villavancier from frontier dental laboratory has made a name for himself in the art of instagram posting gil came into the industry as a (coughs) puberty (laughs) Gil (laughs) gil came into the industry as a rep for vita but eventually partnered up with frontier dental lab and decided to see what he can do to change the way labs advertise to doctors. Gil talks about how he stays engaged with the audience, what and when he posts, and how this form of advertising is not only free, but has taken him and his lab to areas that most people can only dream about. So join us as we chat with Gil Villavancier. The Asiga Max, the world's most advanced lab 3D printer, offers exceptional productivity. Well over 400 labs in the U.S. can attest to its accuracy, speed, and precision. With the 62 micron print precision, the MAX is optimized for both the dental lab or the clinical environment. 
its exclusive SPS Smart Positioning System technology guarantees that every single layer is formed accurately, resulting in consistent results in any environment. And its single point calibration makes calibration extremely accurate and fast. As an open material system, you can print any suitable resin from any material manufacturer. Your choice, no strings. The Max also features the fastest material changeover of any 3D printer. Labs love this. Change completely from one print resin to another in under 30 seconds, which is really amazing because you and I both know how hard that is. All of this and the finest, most dependable technical support staff in the dental lab industry. Call Whitmix today or visit Whitmix.com to find out more about the Asiga Max. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. So why do you do this? What's in it for you? To give back to the industry? To- yeah, a little bit of that. I just love this industry a ton. Barb and I both were on the NADL board. Yeah. We raised money for the foundation. That's what I figured. I fell in love with Dentist Podcast as I was trying to learn more about the industry and thought to myself, why not one for ourselves? Cool. And is it you that does all of the, the memes and everything? I yeah, I that's you. me. <laughs> okay. So I like you already because I, I get a kick out of it. Yeah. Some of the- I'd repost, but it would probably piss our dentists off. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I do it because I know my audience. (laughs) A few have been shared over to dentist Facebook groups, and then Mm -hmm. the comments have been quite hilarious. (laughs) Like I said, I get a kick out of it. I think I reposted one of yours, you know, about the old technician. I said, here's my rent after a few years. So, yeah. (laughs) Well, we'd like to welcome to the podcast today Instagram star from Frontier Dental Lab, Gil, Ve- oh, I already forgot. Villasenir. Villasenir. Okay, just read it out loud. Look at the term. Villavasir. Villavasir. Gil Villavasir. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. Thanks for having me. This is quite a thrill. Absolutely. So it's no secret that lately I've been addicted to Instagram. And you, sir, and Frontier Dental Labs are all over it. And we've talked to quite a few people on this podcast in the past about advertising labs, but you seem to have found the secret sauce to do it. But but before we get into that, how did you end up at Frontier? What's your background? So my background, I probably know a lot of your listeners out there in that I was the VP of sales and marketing for Vita. Vita Zan Fabrique, the restorative company, shade guides, et cetera. Yeah. So I was with them for 13 years. So as the national sales manager, I was able to go to visit with a lot of labs all across the country. Uh, I started my dental lab career in Ohio and then made my way out to California. When I was with Vita, one of our big customers was the Frontier Dental Lab Group. And, you know, you sit around the campfire, have a few beers and some marshmallows and conversations take place. So that's how I ended up at Frontier. And that was 2013 is when that. Oh, so yeah, not too long ago. Not not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So what'd you do before Vita? Did you say you were in a lab? No, I was in, I was in sales, dental and medical sales. And I started out as a rep at Vita, was promoted to region manager, was promoted to uh, director of sales promoted the VP of sales. So it just kind of uh, been a great transition. And I've, I've enjoyed the lab industry. My heart is there. And now I get to be one of the labs in the lab industry. So it feels yeah. like a really good place for me. Yeah. So you've never actually sat at a bench, made anything? Elvis, you would not want me to make a tooth. And, and the, <laughs> the, the, the funny thing on Instagram, you've probably seen them Hey, Gail Frontier Dental, way to go. Great, great work. You know, they all think I yeah. did it, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So we all get a kick out of that. But, you know, I'm just the front man. I hear you. I've never made anything either, but I get CDT put after my name a lot in publications. <laughs> I don't know why, but. <laughs> so when you joined Frontier, you said it was a group. So is it just the two labs? I know of one in California and one in Canada. So that was the Frontier Dental Lab Group. And uh, I guess I call that a group of labs. Now, recently, we've become partnered with a private equity company, 
and we have a lab in Milwaukee now, and we're also talking to others. But the good oh, thing nice. about it is we're not trying to change everything to become a frontier lab. You get to retain your own identity as a lab that's made you successful, but you get to utilize some of the things that we've done. So, for example, we've got a playbook for social media that we've developed at Frontier from my experiences. So that's now available. We're not going to try to change everybody's boxes to Tiffany Green or to use mm-hmm. the same slogan, that kind of thing. So it's it's a good model and, and it works. And we should be on a pretty good growth path now that a lot of the, the labs and the businesses in our industry are showing good trajectory after, you know, post COVID. And that's really, oh, yeah. that's really what the private equity companies look at. They're not penalizing anybody for the blips of the COVID shutdown. In fact, they're looking at it in a way that says, wow, your lab recovered, your lab bounced back. We're going to give you good value for your lab. So that's where we're at there. Yeah, that's interesting. Never even thought about that. Mm -hmm. If someone was looking to sell their lab, how do you explain 2020? (laughs) So what our partners have done is they just exclude it from any of the financials. They're not not even a part of anything. They want to know how you did up to that point. And they want to know what you did after that point. So it's basically taking out what uh, March, April, May, if you will. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're not getting dinged for having three months of no revenue, basically. Yeah, but the whole world had no revenue for three months, except for Amazon. (laughs) So when you showed up at Frontier, I mean, obviously you knew the industry well. Mm -hmm. What was your first role at Frontier? My role in Frontier was sales. Now sales, and this will transition good to, to your opening statement. So in sales for a dental lab, what are some of the things that we do? Door-to-door, study clubs, Mm. direct mail. Those are the things that you do. You host seminars. You do educational luncheons, lunch and lunch, things like that. Email blasts. Email blasts. You know, think of a direct mail campaign where you're putting out 10,000 pieces of direct mail, paying the postage, paying the printing, et cetera. My post this morning just got seen by 14,000 people, and it didn't cost me anything, but the time drinking my coffee and my thumbs. So it's a totally new way of doing this. And with Instagram, Elvis, it's really, it's still selling, but you're just doing it in a digital world. Mm -hmm. And I'd much rather get an Instagram notification than something in the mail. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Everything we do is with our phones these days. They're permanently attached to us. So, and and let me just cover this now while we can, because I've been on programs People ask me, why are you giving away your secrets to what could be your competitors, right? Mm -hmm. So I live by the abundance principle. I'd rather have all of these good, high-quality labs listening in get better so that they can reach doctors rather than for those doctors to send them overseas or or whatever the case might be. I live by the abundance principle, and I think if if we all get better, there's plenty of business for all of us. And and the reality is nobody's going to take my secrets and take my business away from me. It's still up to me every day to do what we have to do. I'm just here, just like you in the industry, I'm here to help. And and if you do that, then great. No, yeah. If we can all help each other, it's going to strengthen our industry and make all of us stronger and better. Exactly. So that's why I do this. And that's why I'll share some tips and secrets and those kind of things. All right. So give it up, Gil. How do you get 57,000 followers on Instagram? You saw my thumbs right now, Elvis. They have a little bit of a, a hint of arthritis in them. Because I'm, not here all the time. <laughs> I, I'm very fortunate that this is my full-time job. And yeah. if you think of really simplify this, what, what I like to tell people is, because they ask me the same question, I go, it's taken me 20 years of sales experience to become an overnight sensation on Instagram. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. Here's the line I used. It's cheesy, but it's actually true. You know, two and a half years ago, before we started our digital media campaigns at Frontier, I didn't have any accounts myself on Face Chat or Snapbook. I didn't even know what a hashtag was. I thought it was mm-hmm. something you see. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't use any of those things. But when we decided to do it, I studied the market. I went to a bunch of seminars, webinars, read a bunch of books. I actually took about a month off and really just immersed myself in the world of social media and said, if we're going to do this, we got to do this right. So the, what you see today is just a result from, I think January 9th was my first post with 42 followers. I've, I've got it on my phone to prove to people that 
back on January 9th of 2018, I had 40-something followers, and it's just grown steadily ever since. So you guys actually made a conscious decision to say, let's hit social media. Completely conscious. I saw the market shifting. I saw what we were paying for salespeople on the ground, for direct mail campaigns, all those kind of things. I saw more and more dentists on social media. So we said, wait a minute, let's go where the dentists are. They're on social media. And, and the fact of the matter is we have a good product. So we, we have the ability to show it's like a restaurant. If the food's not good, it doesn't matter how much marketing you do. Yeah, it, It's not yeah, going yeah. it, to be short lived. So the fact that our food is good and I had the ability, a platform to show it every day. I mean, I'm very consistent with my post. That's my job. The fact that we can show it every day has helped us grow our following. And the other thing I should mention now too is Instagram, they call themselves, it's an engagement platform. So it's not just sitting back and taking selfies. It's it's engaging. It's saying, hey, Elvis, I like your sweater. Hey, Elvis, how'd you get the, you know, how'd you get mm -hmm. the Elvis? Hey, Elvis, I was in Memphis last week. You know, those are the ways that you can engage with people. And what you're doing is you're showing them that you care about what they're putting on Instagram and you want them to care about what you're doing on Instagram. So that's, that's really how you grow. Yeah, that's interesting. So do you keep like a schedule, like a certain post at a certain time or is it just like a free for all? Cause this is all you do all day. So you just <laughs> go at it. Let me ask you, what, do, what do you think? Because if you follow me and you see my posts, what do you think? I would like to think that it's just a free for all, but there seems to be a bit of a schedule to it. You're, you're right on both counts. So, yeah. Post, I post every day. That's the feed post, right? Mm -hmm. Because what I want to do is when you wake up and you open up your Instagram, well, in your case, you're on the East Coast, but when you open up your Instagram at lunchtime, more than likely I'm going to pop up there, correct? Yep, you do. More than likely. And then when you open up your Instagram anytime during the day, more than likely I'm in that circle in the top left corner that's showing something serious, fun, my dog, whatever it is. That's the stories. And so- yep. All I'm trying to do is occupy real estate in your head that says, if I need a dental lab, it's going to be Gill Frontier Dental. That's the whole purpose of it. Yeah. So the posts are scheduled every day. The stories is just miscellaneous ramblings of a madman. That, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> it's also worth noting that you don't just post work. You don't just post beautiful crowns or veneers or anything. I mean, you're right. It's your dog. It's you at an event. It's. And we'll get into this. It's you at beauty shows. I mean, it's not just crown product A. You yes, know? yes. Uh, the purpose for that, Elvis, is uh, remember, I'm. this is for my business. I'm not doing this for my health, right? So if I wasn't getting paid through attracting business for Frontier Dental Lab, I probably wouldn't be doing this. Sure. What I'm trying to do is the adage in social media is, educate, entertain, make them laugh, make them cry. So all I'm trying to do is educate you, entertain you. If all I did was try to sell you a veneer every day, what would you probably do? You'd unfollow me. If every time I popped up on your phone yeah. and all you saw was veneers, $99, we got a special 20 bucks off, whatever yeah. the case might be, I'm being facetious. But then you, at some point you'd get tired. I mean, you, you'd unfollow me, right? But Probably. It, yeah. you have no idea what to expect from me tomorrow. It could be food. It could be a beauty queen that you're going to be really happy you saw that picture. It could be teaching you something in the lab. It could be a beautiful veneer case. It could be a doctor. So we're just mixing it up, trying a bunch of different things. It could be you up on a ladder fixing some piece of equipment I saw the other day. Yeah. Because it yeah. sounds so, like they have you do everything. It's like a day in the life. And, and if it's interesting, people will follow. If it's really interesting, they'll engage with you. If it's monotonous, if it's boring, if it's annoying, then they'll unfollow you. So there's a few people out there that I've given license to, and you're going to be one of them, uh, that I said, hey, if, if I ever get annoying, please tell me. And I'll, I'll change the, the tone, the tune of, uh, of my postings. Yeah, I would say the same thing to our audience, you know, mm -hmm. if there's ever anything that's gotten old, let us know. Please. Let us know, yeah. <laughs> So why did you have your Instagram associate with your personal? Because it's Gill Frontier Dental Lab, not just Frontier Dental Lab. So that was completely by design. A couple of reasons. We had some people, the previous owners of Frontier also had a software company and they had a bunch of uh, millennials that knew, in, that knew social media, knew Instagram. They had a site called Frontier Dental Lab. Mm -hmm. And in the time they had four people working it in two years, 
nothing happened. There was no traction from it at all. And one of the webinars that I went to, or actually this was a seminar that I attended, they said the more personal you can make it, the better it's going to be. So if you're Dr. Elvis Dahl in Indianapolis and you connect with Gil Frontier Dental, it's going to be unmistakable that you're going to be connecting with me. And that that's the reason why it's personal. Yeah. But, and that also leads to why everybody thinks you do the work. <laughs> <laughs> You've grown the Instagram. I don't even know. Do you have a lot, a lot of Facebook? Is that large? Too, I don't do any. Mostly? I have somebody else that handles our Facebook. I don't, I don't manage that at all. Yeah. It's a different audience there. It's a different messaging there. Just like TikTok's a different message. So Instagram is really where we're at. And could you put a number on the amount of accounts you think you've gotten with the growth of Instagram? Rather than the number, let me put it this way. We're reaching so many people that dentists will contact us. I'll give you an example. Today's a perfect example. This was all from DM, from direct messaging through Instagram. And I just got his prescription for a 20-unit case. 20 unit full mouth case now. Nice. That's totally unheard of in our industry. They're a yeah. dentist sends you a 20 unit case as their first case. And I've never, I've never even spoken to this dentist yet. That's how powerful Instagram is. And that's a, I wouldn't call it a daily occurrence, but a, you know, sure. several times a week occurrence. Yeah. So I also noticed on the Frontier Dental website, and I found this interesting that you guys, okay, you guys advertise Frontier using dentists. Correct. You can go to the Frontier Dental lab, like a patient could go there and say, hey, I like your stuff. I've seen you on Instagram. I want to find a dentist in my area that uses you. What was the thought about this? This is unheard of too, as far as I know. Totally unheard of. And if we do this podcast in about three months, you'll see something else ridiculously unheard of, Elvis, but I can't let it out of the bag just yet, okay, unfortunately. I get it. <laughs> secret I can't share with you just yet. But mark my words, in three months, it'll be seismic what we're going to be doing. So the reason we've done this is there's, there's really twofold. One, we want to show that we work with the top dentists out there, right? And there was a little bit of a calculated risk because Elvis's dental lab could look at that dentist's name as a client of Frontier and contact them mm -hmm. and say, hey, I just saw your post on Gil's site. Are you interested in using Elvis's dental lab? Correct. But what's the chances of that really happening, of that dentist doing that? Yeah. It was more important for us to show the social proof that this dentist uses Frontier Dental Lab. Now, take that one step further, is that patients are, because we have such exposure on Instagram and other social media, patients are coming to us asking about veneers. And then now we can connect them with, with the dentist, much like what you're seeing on our site. Yeah. We can connect them with a the dentist. So now, how does that dentist feel that I just gave them a lead for a 10-unit case? Probably pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah, many other labs doing that. Now, it takes a lot to get to that point. But again, we've been lucky in that, you know, we show good work. We've got, we're working with great dentists and the patients are coming to us now saying, and you think of anything, the best example I can give you is when somebody researches a purse, a vehicle, or their dog food, they know the protein fillers in their dog food. They know the composition of the leather of the purse. They know what engine they want in the car, et cetera. And, and so now consumers or patients for veneers really don't know that much. But when they see us every day, they go, hey, I want frontier veneers. I want a frontier smile. They're going to come to us and say, can you tell me more about that? Or can you connect me with a dentist that, that provides that? Yeah. So how much does a dentist have to work with you before they get on that list? Is it just one case and you're good to go or do they have to be an established dentist? We actually have an algorithm and that algorithm lies in my head at, at this point. Yeah. It, asking for dentists, if we know a dentist is loyal to us and they use us quite a bit and we know that they're going to be a good match for that patient. Sometimes we connect two or three. Nice. I mean, if it's a dentist that's only used this for one case, it's highly unlikely that we're going to give them that lead because these leads could be extremely valuable. Sure. And I see that you're all over the U.S. I see a couple in Hawaii, some overseas. That's pretty, yeah. that's pretty amazing. Through Instagram, I just picked up an account in Trinidad and Tobago, of all places. And that was just from Instagram. So there's a lot of power in social media. And like I said, part of why I'm doing this is to let you know other labs know that there's, there's a lot of business to be had out there through digital means. 
So how big is Frontier? How many technicians do you have there? That's a moving target, but we probably, in the El Dorado Hills, we have probably 70 plus. Wow, that's a good size lab, yeah. Okay. Good size lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you must be to handle all these accounts from all over the place. <laughs> you don't want to have more technicians than you have Instagram followers. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of a correlation, but, you know, what we've done with the... Uh, the, the nice thing with Instagram, when when you get to a certain size, is it just builds, right? Instagram likes us because we post every day, so they yep. know there's going to be a lot of engagement to what we're doing. Sure. And we we just seem to have hit that sweet spot of what's enough posting versus not doing every once a week or something. You got to be consistent, but you can't be overwhelming either or else you'll annoy people. You see that a lot with labs. They'll get into social media and they'll post 400 pictures in 20 days and then they won't do anything for three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to keep up on it. You got to stay consistent. Yeah. I think the sweet spot Elvis is, you know, once a day, once every other day, just to, just to occupy space in somebody's mind that you're there. Yep. The one thing I say don't do is to post and ghost, post and then hide or post and not be seen. Then it doesn't have the same effect as, as being consistent. Yeah, I think that's good advice. So another thing I see posted on the Instagram a lot is you guys have like a book that you provide dentists. That's almost like a, it's like a picking out a haircut, but for teeth. Am I right about that? Love it. You're, you're right on it because actually some dentists have put these books in hair salons. Oh, with a little card on it or something. It's got a private label on the back that says, for a free consultation, talk to Dr. Smith. That's awesome. Right here in the shopping center. <laughs> the book is called Frontier Smiles. I'm looking right at it. And it's a gallery of smiles. It's not designed to be a choose which smile you want, but really to show what's possible. Mm -hmm. So how many different smiles are in the book? Yeah, there's probably 30, it's 35 pages of all different smiles. We've got some beauty queens. We've got a dentist, young, old, male, female. We even show a little bit about how veneers are made. So this way they know that it's a handmade restoration so they don't get sticker shock when they go to the dentist. How did the book come about? Did you work with dentists to get the before and after pictures? Do you give them credit in the book? There's no no dentist names are mentioned in the book. It's it's an agnostic book because obviously if, if it's going to go into Dr. Elvis's office, we don't want it to say Dr. Gill on it. Oh, right? yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the only thing that's mentioned is Frontier Smiles. See what is possible. Nice. So we've been fortunate that we work with enough dentists that we've got a pretty good catalog of, of good clinical before and after shots to put in there. And we also work with a lot of beauty queens. So Obviously, they have uh, modeling shoots, photo shoots, so we, we get to put their pictures in there as well, too. All right. We've mentioned it at least three times. How did you become <laughs> the official dental lab of beauty contests and beauty queens? Okay. That's <laughs> one secret I can't tell. I can't disclose on this, on this broadcast. <laughs> well, I'm teasing. You know, sometimes things just happen right time and right place. Yeah. We started working with a few beauty queens through one of the dentists that we work with. Uh, and then I, I just inserted myself and expanded it from there. I'll give you an example. This past weekend, I was the judge at the national and international Miss and Mrs. Cosmos pageant in Orlando, Florida. One whole week there, 105 contestants plus all their families. I mean, it was an insane experience, Elvis, that I highly recommend if you ever get there. And people ask me, how did that become? It was just one connection to another to another, and then here I was. So I probably had dozens of ladies coming up to me and said, hey, I'm thinking about veneers. Can you tell me more about this? Really? So we just put ourselves as beauty brand that, I mean, here's something your listeners would love to hear. In the past, what have dental labs been? We're kind of in the background of the dentist, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, yeah, sure. We're at arm's length. In fact, I had a mom come up to me and say, you know what? I have four kids. I've been to the dentist twice a year. We've had many crowns and, and all this, and they never mentioned the lab even exists. Mm, no, most people it, don't even know about us. So this is me being an advocate for our industry. So I said, that's interesting. And she goes, this is the first time I've even seen anything about a dental lab. And I showed her the ad that had our picture in there, a picture of me, beauty queens, picture of our facility. And I said, you know, we actually make the teeth for the dentist. It's a team effort. The dentist is the one that, you know, has to, prep you, do all the clinical, but we the teeth are made in our facility. Hmm. Wow, that's fascinating. 
So what I've done is help educate that customer, help them be more informed because when a customer is informed, then the chances of them getting veneers with a dentist, whether it's one of our dentists or any dentist out there, increases tremendously, right? Oh, absolutely. When that consumer is informed about the dog food, the protein fillers that's in it, the composition of chicken, et cetera, they're more apt to buy that dog food than if they were left to guess or, or not, not sure. So that, that's part of our mission is to help people understand veneers, help them understand what goes into a restoration so it doesn't seem like it's just either spit out of a machine or the dentist went in the back room and made this thing and came out with it. It may offend some dentists. I get that. But again, it's a calculated risk where I said, you know what? An informed consumer is a much better consumer than somebody that, that's not informed. Yeah. And then also it'll be easier to satisfy that patient. Exactly. And for the dentist in the long run. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is not satisfy the patient because they didn't understand. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there was a dentist already doing work on beauty queens that already used Frontier. Is that how it all started? And then it just it just expanded. That beauty queen told another beauty queen, told another beauty queen. Next thing you know, you're judging shows. <laughs> well, I showed up there and I gave the beauty queen Frontier swag, T-shirts, water bottles. They're showing it off on social media. Another beauty queen says, hey, how do I get one of these? And, and you know, it's 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 inserting yourself in the situation at the right time and the right place. And that's what happened. That's awesome. Do you have any idea how many veneers you've done on contestants over the years? Or um, I really don't because some, some contestants maybe just want whitening. Some contestants yeah. maybe just want... You know, just have some composite fix. I mean, obviously, I'll give you an example. I was at the, the pageant this past weekend. The little girls that won it from the little minis were five to seven. The junior minis were eight to ten. <laughs> obviously, they're not going to get veneers. But I had a, a teen that said, I'd really like to know more about veneers. And here she was wearing braces. And I said, you're probably better off to contact me in a couple years after <laughs> the braces come off. But that's how important it is to them in that, you know, they want to look good, so they want a beautiful smile. How many of them get veneers that really don't need it? Let's be honest. I mean, they're already beautiful. They already have good teeth, yeah. but they always want to go that extra step. You know, in the beauty business, in the model and cele- – I mean, take celebrities, for example. I'm pivoting a little bit. Yeah. Take celebrities, for example. Most celebrities probably have veneers, whether they admit it or not, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, nature is not that perfect to show these beautiful smiles on the cover of Vogue magazine. They're, they're just, it just isn't that way. So we did, for example, veneers for one of the biggest celebrities that's out there, Cardi B. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> He's got a set of our teeth. It, it started out as we were going to just do her uppers. We ended up doing all of her lowers too, and she couldn't be more happy with us. So our smiles are actually on... When I was in New York a few weeks ago, there was a billboard of Cardi B. She had a, a smile and repose. I mean, it wasn't a big, big smile, mm-hmm. but we're showing, but that's us right there. So it was pretty cool. That is cool. It's, it's really cool. We're very fortunate to do that. I think that's actually helped us a lot in business as well, too, because now people say, I, I want to smile like Cardi B's, or if you guys did Cardi B's, I'm sure you're pretty good at doing ours. What sort of trouble can you get into announcing that you've done somebody famous? Here in Indianapolis, you know, we don't get celebrities, but we've done a few like uh, Indianapolis Colts players, and you know about it, but are we allowed to say, hey, we did it for this guy? Or It's really up to the individual. Okay. Some, some celebrities make you sign off that you can't use any of their images, the agreement I had with, with Cardi B is as long as it's camera ready and it's out there on social media, we can pull it and, and use it. Yeah, and you don't have to send her a check or anything? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably another seat. No, actually, this one, she was just so happy what we did. That's... We turned it around. I, our times were so tight that I had to have our manager, who's a big Cardi B fan. Oh, there you go. Down with her on Friday morning to place it on Friday because Cardi B was going to hit the the red carpet on Saturday for the Grammy Awards. No pressure there. No pressure. It had to go. 20 units. What if you break a veneer? What if one didn't fit? What if the margin wasn't sealed? Elvis, we could not play what if. We had to play it will. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Yeah, it was a lot of pressure. And I remember she had her nurse, her bodyguards there. She's on the phone with her manager, her sister, FaceTiming her husband, you know, oh, all that. Oh, wow. Yeah, no thanks. No pressure. Yeah. (laughs) 
I also noticed that you guys have the Frontier Dental Laboratory shoes. <laughs> you do follow me. I right. do follow you, and I find yeah, this yeah. interesting because I thought the only dental lab related shoes were the ones done by Carbon. We've all seen those out and about. Uh huh. Uh-huh. How do you end up having a pair of shoes? How does this even happen? <laughs> You know, that's not really, really much of a secret. That I can tell you. The Nike has a program where you can custom design your own shoes. So oh, that's all okay. I can. I got on Nike's website. You know, that's probably, I was bored on a Sunday afternoon. I said, you know what, let me play shoe designer for a moment here. You put the colors, put the name on there. Funny thing is, after I posted those, I, I got a bunch of requests for shoes. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm big on branding. You see, you know, my wristbands and, you know, where's my wristband taking me? Will make you smile. I mean, I'm, I'm very big on that. The colors that we use, I, I think it's important to create an identity if you're trying to get a national reputation out there so that there's no mistaking that this is Frontier Dental Lab. Yeah, let's talk about that hashtag you came up with, will make you smile. I mean, mm-hmm. you post Dennis wearing that shirt like crazy. How cool is that? That Hi, is very, very brilliant. <laughs> yeah. How'd that come about? Again, the way I think of things is not what's in it for me, but what's in it for the end user or the customer or the dentist, right? Yeah. So I thought if I could have a dentist walking around with a t-shirt that brings up a conversation about smiling and it helps them get business when they're in line at the gym then they're going to wear my shirt. So that's what happened. We'll make you smile. Frontier is very subtle on the sleeve. And so now a dentist can go to yoga class and somebody says, what do you mean smile? How are you going to make me smile? They say, oh, I'm a dentist. Bingo. They just got a new patient from their yoga class oh, because of that. that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Do you hand those out to all your accounts? Uh, that's that's one where... Uh, another algorithm in your head? Another algorithm in my head. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can tell too, Elvis, we would like to have a little bit of fun while we're at it, right? Yeah. It's not just selling veneers or anything like that. Again, one of my big sayings when I've done uh, lectures or educational content is think of Instagram as one big giant cocktail party, right? Uh-huh. I mean, in my case, my cocktail party has 57,000 people and then some. And, and so if I was the guy in the corner and all I did was hold up a sign that says $99 veneers. Am I going to get people coming over to me? Am I going to get beauty queens coming over to me to say, wow, Gil, you're really an interesting guy. I'd love to learn more about you. Mm, I get Probably it. Probably not, right? Yeah. Instead, I'm walking around that cocktail party with Frontier shoes, showing what I eat, showing my dog, being genuinely interested in people. And that's why I think we've been very successful with, with our Instagram program is because we're just having a lot of fun at the cocktail party yeah. called social media. Yeah, that's a great analogy because it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if I could rock a bikini, Elvis, I might have even more followers, but I got to work hard at it. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see that. <laughs> I'll see you in a second. <laughs> How has Frontier grown since this social media explosion i mean obviously it was a well-running lab before you started doing this Mm -hmm. has it doubled in size i can share this with you it grew so much that exponentially actually it grew so much that it got the attention of private equity investors and the lab was sold two and a half years ago not coincidentally in the time that we started ramping up with instagram Mm -hmm. and in the process they made me one of the partners, including Brent West, who runs the inside of the lab, one of the partners. So, you know, from a guy just selling teeth at study clubs to being one of the partners in the lab holdings partnership, we've done pretty good there. So wow. I think that's an indication of how, of how much they value it and how much the lab has grown. That's amazing. And I mean, mm-hmm. 70 employees, and then you have two other labs, one in Canada and one in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How'd you end up with the one in Wisconsin? <laughs> so that was an addition to our platform. That's New Art Dental Lab. They're a really good good lab out there. It complements what we do. And again, we'll probably be adding more here as the, the year goes on because people are realizing that they're getting good values for their labs and they're able to, to sell it. You know, a little plug for our partners with O2. The traditional private equity in our lab space has not been tremendously positive, right? Because what they've tried to do is taken labs and through mergers and acquisitions, either reduce the size 
all of the labs that we've taken on have grown as a result of being a part of our platform. Yeah. They're not trying to consolidate, trying to merge labs at all. They just want to take existing labs and grow it. So if you have a lab out there that's doing well, but you think it can do better, especially using our marketing playbook, our whatever, then that's, that's what O2 is interested in. So what sort of lab are you looking for? To grow or are you looking for you guys don't do removables do you we don't do removables we're full we, i'm sorry i take that back in canada we do removables in new york we do frontier el dorado hills is just fixed mostly anterior work mm -hmm. again a lab doesn't have to complement us they just have to be a good business for for them to be a part of our platform and to be a good investment for the private equity firms they just need to be a good well-running business yeah, so you're not looking for specific types of labs, specific sizes. No, the model of the past that, you know, again, trying to consolidate. We're not trying to consolidate. We're trying to grow. Yeah, because you hear that a lot when a lab gets bought out. Next thing you know, they have half the staff and most of, exactly. it, most of it's leaving and going to another facility. Yeah. No, in all of our cases, we've grown the labs and that's what we intend to do. So you mentioned you mostly do anterior in California. Mm -hmm. Do you not even bother with single posterior crowns? Or do you... We do, but the reality of it is a doctor is not going to come to us to get the best posterior possible, mm -hmm. right? I mean, posteriors are fairly commoditized. Oh, yeah. So they're not going to come to us for that. They're going to come to us. The, the one today, it's for his mother-in-law. He goes, I got to get this thing right. It's for my mother-in-law. I'm sending you 10 units. Now, once we get the 10 units and he sees you know, how well it fits, whatever, when he's ready to send us posteriors, they'll send us those posteriors then too. So we do a lot of single units because that's the majority of dentistry. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what's Frontier working on other than, you know, acquiring other labs? What's next in Gil's book of uh, tricks? <laughs> <laughs> We're always learning. We're always trying to, to stay ahead, you know, trying new frontiers, if pardon the pun. Yeah. We're always trying we're always trying to see what else is out there. I mean, if, if Instagram is going to change their algorithm tomorrow, we need to be prepared. And where's the next boom going to be? Is it going to be on TikTok? Is it going to be on Facebook? Is it going to be podcasts or, or something like that? So we're always looking. Like I said, the seismic shift will happen in about three months. And I'm sorry, I can't tell you yeah. more at this point. We're just putting pieces together. Now but I'm we, intrigued. <laughs> There's my marketing background, Elvis. I just wanted to intrigue you. <laughs> but it's taken all the things that we've learned over these last couple of years and putting a program together. You know, like like take these take these books. I'm I'm looking at the book, the Frontier Smiles book. Yeah. Originally we didn't have it labeled specifically for doctors, but we said let's let's come up with a personalized volume program. You know, we used to order the books by quantities of 500. Well, with printing, obviously more is better. So mm -hmm. now we're ordering these things by the thousands with doctor's names on the back of them. So a doctor doesn't have to do the heavy lifting. We've already done it. And so, you know, we're always trying to evolve. We feel that the market for veneers for cosmetic work is, is only going to grow. People are out there and they, if we can educate the consumer better, then we, we feel that that's going to be good for all of us, whether it's it's one of my dentists, whether it's a, one of my competitors' dentists out there. We just think it's going to be a much better world out there. Yeah, I've always believed that public education of our industry is a must for us mm -hmm. to all succeed because it is very hard to sell a final product when the final consumer has no idea what good is. <laughs> exactly. I mean, when you're, you know, the analogy I give is the patient – is upside down with three pairs of hands in their mouth. They have no idea what's going to happen, what veneers are going in there, right? No. Nope. The same patient that researches the heck out of a Gucci Louis Vuitton purse to make sure what they're getting is exactly what they want and it's going to serve the purpose for them. Yeah. So I also see that you're an avid exerciser. I don't know about avid, but I'm an old guy, so I feel I gotta I gotta stay. In. <laughs> well, you bring it into your social media a lot I at the gym, working out, and I think it's going over well because you see a lot of doctors share that hashtag while at the mm -hmm. gym, and uh, yeah, you know, it's all just interesting tips that we need to kind of get because I think a lot of labs can learn a lot about. I mean, we're not all going to get fifty-seven thousand followers. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I started in the lab, and they said. We should have a Facebook page. I think I got up to 30, and most of them probably didn't even know what a, 
a dental lab was. They just liked it just because. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to get that out there. Here's what I say about that, Elvis. I mean, 57 sounds impressive. All you care about is the one follower that's going to call you tomorrow that says, hey, ABC Dental Lab, I'm interested in using you. That's all I care about is the one person Mm -hmm. that does that. Now, fortunately for us, the flywheel is spinning so well and so fast that we're bringing people on much quicker. But I started out where where most of your listeners, in fact, less than most of your listeners are today. Because next time I meet you in person, I'll show you my phone that shows how many followers I had every month when I started. Yeah. I'm the same way with the podcast. I have a screenshot from like the third weekend when we had like 10 listens. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, thousands a month. It's yeah, consistency. I think is is the key in quality quality product. You know, of course. Mm-hmm. And you guys look like you do amazing veneers. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Who takes the pictures in the lab? Is that you? So I wish it was me. And you know how a lab works. Sometimes you don't have time to take the pictures mm-hmm. if they have to go out that day. Sure. A lot of times I have a technician with an iPhone take it, so we don't use a lot of filters. I mean, it's just take it at your desk. Every now and then we have a time to put it in a light box Mm -hmm. and put it on a rotating platform, but that's very seldom. Like my post today, the breaking news post today, I I had a lot of comments and some messages on that one because it was a beautiful case. Mm -hmm. The breaking news one, right? Because it's a newscaster that's going to be wearing that. Oh, that was just done at the technician's bench right there, right after he was done with it, came out of the furnace before he put it in the box to go out the door today. Yeah, as someone that it's in a lab, I notice, oh, look at the section dies, the, the patty. I mean, it's not prettied up for photos, let's just say. No, <laughs> it's, no. it's a working model. <laughs> it's pretty much, we have pretty much 10 minutes from the time that it leaves the furnace before it has to go out the door or it has to go to QC, then out the door. That's awesome. So how do you know that it's for a newscaster? Do they tell you that when they send in the work? We were fortunate in this case in that the doctors made a little comment. They said, you might recognize, you know, we have the photos, obviously, the picture. Oh, yeah. The person, they go, you might recognize this. You guys got to hit hit a home run. This is for a national newscaster, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what caught my attention on yeah. it. But usually you have no idea, right? I mean, you have no yeah. idea. So do you always require photos? It depends on the doctor. I mean, obviously, most of our work is across the country. Very Mm -hmm. little of it is local. So it really depends on the dentist. Some are really good at providing photos and communication. Some will send a video. Some will, you know, send us the digital impression. It it just really depends on the doctor. Yeah, but do you do them with no photos or anything and just go for it? No, that would be very hard to do. And, And again, we've got the luxury, Elvis, that... If a doctor doesn't provide us the right records, we can go back. Or if the doctor doesn't provide us with a good impression, we can go back and tell the doctor, hey, you're going to have to re-impress if you wanted us to to proceed with this, to, you know, to have a good finished product. And I call it a luxury because if we had Elvis and Gill's dental lab and we only have four clients and we got to make, you know, get the cases out the door, we might compromise a little bit. Mm-hmm. But we have the ability to be able to tell our doctors, hey, look, we're, we're going to have to re-impress this one. Yeah. I mean, no, that's not a call that lab owners like to make. No, never. But you're better off doing that than to have the, than go through all the motions of the case and then have it not fit and then have the dentist mad at you because it didn't seat. Sure. What do you get mostly? Digital scans or are you still getting a lot of impression? Uh, most of ours are impre- – and, and for the big cases, uh, most of ours probably – 70% are probably still PBS. Really? Even out there in but, California, huh? <laughs> yeah, but digital is growing, and, and really that's just going to be a matter of a function of how comfortable they are scanning 10 units versus, you know, a single unit posterior. They're really good at scanning those. So we get a lot of those now, too. Sure. Yeah. And do you do a lot of just your single centrals? I wouldn't call it a lot, but we have our fair share. In fact, my last couple cases, I don't know if you saw my post from a couple of days ago. It sounds like you're, you've been watching single central success. And that happened to be a single unit for one of my VIP clients. And uh, that's my son out in San Francisco. No kidding. (laughs) I I said, this better go in, man. (laughs) Now the pressure's the other way. (laughs) Yeah, that's the other way now. How do you handle shades? I mean, beautiful work. You, you got to see these patients sometimes. Well, you know, good photos. And again, we've got it dialed in with some of our good clients yeah. across the country. And you know what custom shades at the lab are. 
I, I call it it's it's just absolving the doctor of the responsibility, right? Yes. I mean, you know, so you give us good photos, a good shade tab. I actually teach a course at the Nash Institute on shade taking, oh, nice. color and theory. So I'd like to say that that helps us quite a bit. I do lunch and learns virtually through Zoom now mm-hmm. or you know, through FaceTime and I can do that. So again, it's it's. I've done it before, but we used to travel all around the country. Now I can do it from the comfort of my office using technology. Do you think you'll take it back to traveling? or do you... Probably not. No? Because <laughs> <laughs> probably you probably traveled a ton back when it was a little bit more open. And... I did. Pre-COVID, I was traveling quite a bit. And then one of the things that it's taught us is how can you better consolidate? Now, in some cases, you have to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, last week I was in Orlando the whole week at a beauty pageant. I was not going to do that one by Zoom. Sure. It was, you're right there. And then I was able to visit some of our dentist clients in and around the area. Yeah. So how do you teach a shade taking class virtually? I mean, that's got to be... So a couple of things. We teach them the science and theory of color, value, chroma, hue, yep. the differences. We talk to them about what kind of photos to take, how to take it, how to take the shade, how light affects it. And then we we look at their tools. What tools are you using today to take a shade of a patient? Some are using a 15-year-old beta shade guide Mm. that the tabs are all over the place and all that. And so we teach them what kind of tools to use and how to be more effective at it. And so, you know, we say, put it in size edge to in size edge, take the photograph, make sure we can see what the shade tab is relative to it. What's the stump shade? How do you take a shade of that? So those are the kind of things that we do. How many times do you teach that class and they look at you weird when you say, take a stump shade? It <laughs> happened to me all the time when I called the offices. Yeah. I'm like a what? I guess I should, you know, we call it stump shade at the lab. I really, during my course, I really call it a prep shade. Yeah. At the prep. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Good catch. So do you utilize Vita from your history or how do you guys, what do you guys use? Absolutely. Yeah. Now the materials, I don't have much say in the materials because the, the technicians, we have a, a department that handles, you know, bringing in new materials, evaluating that. I don't have much say in that, but as far as the shades, I'm obviously very familiar with Vita shades. I can talk about Absolutely. the 3D shade guide, the, the bleach shade guide how to use intermediate shades, mixing formulas, those kind of things. So yeah, I, I saw, I still bleed a little bit of Vita. Yeah. I was there 30 years and the people have been really good to me. There. Absolutely. And the 3D shade guide is, in my opinion, it was always like the staple. It was the go-to. Yeah. And the only reason doctors don't use that is because either they haven't been taught it or they use it and it confuses them. So <laughs> if you can teach people how to use it better, more effectively, it's the much better tool to use. Yeah. You usually run into an office, the shade tab they have is the previous owner's shade tab, and that it was, just, yeah. it was already there. Yeah. Do you guys utilize Mio at all? Because that's been a popular in our industry. We don't, and, and mainly because there's so many different kinds of technology that's out there, and we've been doing this a long time, tried and true. Our philosophy, Elvis, is we don't need to be the the trailblazers, the pioneers. We'd rather do what's tried and true and make that work. If something is out there for a couple of years and gets good, then then we'll do it. We don't have to be forced yeah. by marketing, by dentists to jump into something new, latest and greatest. And it's a luxury that I've got to admit is, is pretty good. Yeah. So basically don't fix it if it ain't broken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's working for us. Mm-hmm. Most of what you do is what? Lithium to silicate on the veneers? Yes. Most of what you see there is Emacs cut back and layered. Now, we do have trained technicians where even no prep veneers, 1.2 millimeters, we, we still cut it back and layer it. So that's why you see them with so much uh, internal effects, translucency, et cetera. Life. That's why you see it with so much life. Yeah. Do you hand press all your lithium desilicate or is it metal? They're all pressed right now. We haven't, you know, we just bought a bunch of milling machines, but that's primarily going to be for zirconia. Yep. So they're still. Rest. Wow, that's great to hear. And from technicians all around, I hear that's the preferred method to press them. Yeah, I don't think there's anything, you know, it's it's true, especially when we're doing a set of 10 veneers, the margin of error becomes much, much less, right? Uh-huh. I think that's that's why that's used. And again, for, so for all the manufacturers, if they're out there, I, I have no input on what... <laughs> what don't what call them tomorrow it. and sell them a mill. <laughs> no, we had really close friends from the industry say, hey, can you get my porcelain in there? You know, I did that 
13 years ago when I was with Vita, and that's the last time I was going to try to get porcelain in the frontier. <laughs> <laughs> were you successful? Well, you were. You use it. I was successful, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still a good account. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for you? I mean, obviously, you're going to keep up on Instagram once a day, a few times a day at least. What else are you getting into? Well, and that's the part that you see. And here's here's the beauty. Here's another tip for all the listeners out there. Social media is just that. It's social. You can copy everything I'm doing if you wanted to, Elvis, because you see what my posts are, right? Yeah. The one thing you can't copy is the engagement, the direct messages, because that takes place behind the scenes. Mm. So I would encourage your your people, think of what Instagram is. It's an engagement platform. It's a cocktail party where you're going out there and you're saying, hey, I'm the guy that you want to be with. You know what? The fact that I've got my arm around a beauty queen, I've got my arm around a, a little girl, you know, that just won a title and mm-hmm. everything, that probably tells people that, you know what, this is the guy I want to talk to. This is the guy that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit up on Instagram someday when I need veneers or when I want to change labs or whatever. So that's the part that most people don't see is what goes on behind the scenes. Forward facing, you you see everything. You see all my stories. You see all my hashtags. You see all my posts. You can go back and see my posts from day one, in fact, if you really want to copy what I do. And that's why I don't mind talking to people about this is because it's social. It's out there. So I encourage your, your listeners to learn more about the platform and devise what it is your own strategy. And here's the thing I, I tell people. Who's your audience? What do you want to tell them? And what do you want to tell them about you? Who are you to them? So in my case, my audience is dentists, but that's now become a little bit more broader because of some of our work with consumers and the fact that our our platform has grown. But Mm -hmm. I want to tell them that, you know, we're good at what we do. We're easy to do business with. We're not going to pressure you. I mean, that's basically what I... You know, that that's what you see on Instagram is what you see on the stories and my posts. When you mention the engagement, does that mean you respond to every comment? I try to. That's a lot. See, yeah. You, I mean, that's my job. You can see that on my posts. I try to, because the more you respond, the more the algorithm pushes your posts up there that says, oh, okay, this guy is active on Instagram. We're going to let more people see his posts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's what I need to do more of for the podcast. <laughs> It takes some work. And like I said, if you see my thumbs, they have arthritis in them, Elvis, from, from working the phone, man. You ever ice them down after a hard day of Instagramming? Yeah. I'm going to put an attachment in the palm of my hand so my phone just stays there. Well, I got to ask, iPhone or Android? What do you want? Um, let's see. iPhone. iPhone. Good man. Good man. I'm at... iPhone 11. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Well, Gil, that's some fascinating stuff. It's awesome talking to you. It's awesome learning about how you took this 47 followers to 57,000. I I encourage everyone to check it out. It's Gil underscore Frontier Dental. Super easy. Oh, thank you. Follow you, even if you're not a dentist looking to do work. Just following how you do it and how often you do it and the type of things you do. I think a lot of labs can learn how we can get close to 57,000 followers just have fun doing it you know a day in the life i mean the way i look at it elvis is it's like i have a tv show that i've got my audience tuned into it right yep and so in fact on instagram your followers they call that your audience yeah and i happen to look at fifty-seven thousand four hundred eighteen in my audience that i can tell them whatever i want to tell them hopefully it resonates and they have fun while they're at it. So, you know, I appreciate being on your program. I appreciate being able to talk to the lab guys that are out there. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a lab guy. Mm. Whether I judge beauty contests or not, I'm, I'm a lab <laughs> guy. You, know, you ask what's next for me. I forgot to answer that completely. I'd love to make a living being a pageant judge. Cause I'll tell you what, there's no better place to be, but um, <laughs> we, we think there's still a lot of growth left with frontier. We think, uh, and, and our platform of labs. We think that there's still dental technology is evolving so fast in the digital world. The social media platforms are evolving so fast that we think that, you know, there's still other places that we can be that we're not today. And uh, we want to find what what's the next Instagram that's out there. And we're always thinking about that. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, there's going to be something next. There'll be something next. I mean, Facebook was the place to be myspace before that yeah you know you can just go on and on and uh we'll see what happens and in the meantime you know we'll continue doing our work 
talking good things about the lab industry. We want people to understand that labs are great people that make teeth for great dentists that are out there. Yeah, that's great, Gail. We appreciate you, man. Okay. All right. Thank you much, sir. And we will hopefully I'll run into you someday. I'm sure I'll run into yeah. you at a show. Are you going to be at Lab Day West? I don't know yet. Still up in the air. I don't know if I'll be there or not. The first big show where we can uh, see each other in person yeah. and get the fist bumps, you know? I've never been. I'd hope to go out there this year. So. Yeah, that's uh, our August, end of last weekend of August. Yep. Mm-hmm. But if not, we'll definitely see you. Okay, Elvis. Awesome, Thanks Gil. a lot. Thanks a lot, sir. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Take care. Okay, bye. Grow3x is a dental supply, service, and marketing company. It was founded by Norbert Palmer, and his goal with Grow3x is to help dental labs, and especially small labs, to lower their costs for supplies, provide business opportunities, and generate growth. Anybody can work with Grow3x and buy from them at a very attractive prices. They carry amazing zirconia burrs, and their rainbow burrs are for PMMA and Trilore, are top notch. They also carry zirconia from Adite and a wide range of Harvest dental products and different 3D print resins. What's really cool about Grow3x is that you can join their Grow3x family program for only 99 cents. What? I know. It's amazing. It's cheaper than the dollar store. Hell yeah. This will then give you an additional 10% discount on all of their supplies and even their CAD CAM design and fabrication services. You've got to try it. They really want to help labs save and grow as they know how hard it is competing with the large groups. And by the way, did you guys know that Norbert from Grow3x used to have his own lab some 10 years ago? So he really does know what labs need. Get a three-month trial membership with Grow3x Family now for only 99 cents and receive three Shade Peg shots free of charge. Shade Peg is a great stump shade material to better match even the most difficult shades. So if you're doing all ceramics, Shade Peg is where it's at. So go over to Grow3x.com and add the Grow3x family to your cart. Then add three Shade Peg shots of 3cc each to your cart and then go to check out. But first, before you buy, enter the discount code VFTB for Voices from the Bench and then you check out. Boom! It's that easy. We appreciate your support of the podcast, Grow3x. Big thanks to Gil for coming on our podcast. I really am sorry that I missed your interview. I was unavailable, but it's truly amazing what you have been able to accomplish and what so many labs have struggled with for years. I think we can all agree that having a full-time job posting amazing things on Instagram would be an awesome career. So be sure to head over to Instagram and give him a follow at Gil underscore Frontier Dental. And he definitely needs a few more. And check out how he engages with the dentists and sec- successfully, successfully gets work from them. I was going to say sex fully, but hey, it works. His page is pretty PG rated. Good. So well, you know, then I guess I shouldn't check it out. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's all we got for you. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good week. See you. Bye. Really? I woke up and said, fuck it.